Hi folks, so today I'm going to go over how to pin a lock. Uh, what we have here is an old uh, sergeant mortar cylinder that I got off of eBay. It uh, is an old uh, zero-bitted lock, which means that it is uh, pinned to open with a blank. So, uh, before we get into that, uh, what we're going to need, uh, just to review what you're going to need uh, in order to repin a lock is obviously a lock, preferably with a working key, otherwise you will have to uh, use a cylinder shim or a, a lockpick set to uh, unlock or open the lock. A follower, that is the correct diameter uh, for the lock. A pair of tweezers. I happen to like uh, Labs formed end tweezers, but you can use uh, pretty much anything that will fit inside the lock. Uh, we will need a key that we want to pin the lock to match, and a uh, screwdriver or similar tool to remove the uh, cam, tail piece, or retainer from the lock. I've already done that, but um, just to save a bit of time. Uh, another helpful thing to have is a plug holder. Very simple uh, little tool, and its purpose is to both hold the uh, plug of the lock while you're working on it, and also it will function as a uh, way to check uh, that none of your pins are too uh, high for the cuts that they're being matched to. And we'll get into how that works in a minute. So uh, the first thing we're going to do now that we have the uh, tailpiece off is we're going to insert our working key. There we go. And we're going to turn the plug uh, between 45 and 90 degrees uh, away from its uh, lock position. And this is to make sure that there are no uh, cavities in the plug that will be lined up with the uh, chambers in the body. We're going to take our follower, and because uh, this tailpiece is a standard mortise well, the back of the plug is uh, more or less a standard uh, mortise lock plug shape, which means we have to use the notched end, and we want to make sure that the follower lines up there cleanly. And now you're going to keep pressure with one hand on the back of the uh, follower and push the plug slowly out with the pin chambers facing up so that uh, the pins don't just fall out everywhere. So we've got our pin out, and we can set the body aside for a second. Uh, since uh, we don't really need any of these pins, and they don't actually match any of the standard uh, pin sizes, we're just going to dump those into an empty uh, pocket in our uh, pin kit. And we can set this aside, and we're going to do the same thing with uh, the body of the lock. Uh, since this is new, uh, we're not going to replace all the springs, but you can also do that in this step as well. You're just going to slowly withdraw the follower, and you'll see uh, one by one the driver pins will spring up like that. And we're going to just take those and place them into another empty pocket. And we're just going to go through there, one by one, slowly pushing the follower back and picking out those drivers as they come out. Uh, now, some pin systems will only use one size of driver. Others will uh, use uh, a handful of driver sizes that are supposed to be matched based on the height of the uh, key pins, and others will even have a requirement that the entire stack of pins match a certain uh, uh, height consistently across the entire lock. Um, Sargent has uh, what five different uh, sizes of driver pin, 
and 10 different sizes of bottom pin. So the shortest driver pin is supposed to be matched to the uh, longest two T pins and uh, the longest, uh, sorry, the shortest driver pin is used with the longest uh, key pins and the longest driver pin is used with the shortest uh, key pins. So uh, because we don't know exactly what order those things are going to be in yet, uh, we're going to just get to working on the plug. So we have our key and we're going to just take a quick note of the general uh, shape of the key because I do not have a uh, key gauge for sergeant but uh, we can see number one is very deep then number three then number four uh, sorry number five then number two then number four then number six so uh, we'll start with number six just because it's the shortest so we can start with a number one pin we're going to use our tweezers to pick that up. And we're going to just put it into that chamber. And if we look closely, you can see it's a little bit short, if the camera would focus. There we go. You can see it's sitting uh, well below the shear line there. So we're going to dump that back out. And we're going to move up to the next size. So this is the number two. And now that sits more or less flush with the shear line, which is what we want here. Come on. I'll cooperate. There we go. Right, so we know that, this, that that's a number two and uh, cut number four was about the same size, so we'll try number two in there as well. And now that uh, is sitting flush with the shear line, and so we'll move on to number two, which was a little bit deeper, so we'll move to one pin size deeper. So let's try number three pin in here, and Now that is a little bit uh, too short. If the camera would ever focus, we could see it's just a little bit below the shear line. So we're going to put that back and we're going to move up to the next size. So number f uh, pin size four. And now that is sitting more or less flush, which is what we want. So, uh, now we get, so let's stop and take another look at the key. And so we know that uh, cut number two So we know that cut number two is uh, not nearly as deep as cut number five, which is our next shallowest cut. So we're going to have to jump at least one pin size, possibly two. So, and that was a number four, so let's jump up to a number six. So there we go. Uh, remember the key pins usually have a rounded or conical tip. Uh, so we want to make sure that that's facing towards the key. And that is close, but still just a little bit too short. So we're going to put that one back, and we're going to move up to the next size. It's uh, number seven. And we're going to try number seven in there. And now the number seven is sitting pretty flush. So we'll move to uh, chamber three. Uh, chamber three, uh, the cut number three is a little bit deeper than uh, number five, so we'll move to uh, number eight pin. And the number eight pin is sitting just about flush there. And now again, we can stop and take a look at our key. And cut number one is the only cut we still need a pin for, and that is uh, very deep. So uh, let's 
jump up another size to a number 9. And the number 9 is a little bit too short, so we'll put him back. And we'll move up to a number 10, which is the l longest that uh, this kit has. And there we go. Now all of those uh, pins are sitting more or less flush with the shear line. And we can double check that using the plug holder. Put that in there and we check if it can turn smoothly. And it does. So we're going to withdraw the key because now we need to match up uh, which driver pins will go with which chamber. So we'll start with number six. Uh, number six was a number two key pin. So we're going to start with the largest size of uh, driver pin. Uh, which Sergeant calls a number 14. And let's see how that sits in the chamber. That looks about good. We don't want too much uh, sticking out because if the driver pin is too long, it actually won't have enough space to retreat entirely into the chamber in the body uh, because there's already the spring in there and there's only so much space that it can uh, take up before it squishes the, the spring and hits the uh, cap on the end of the chamber. Um, so number five, uh, number five was I think a number six or a number seven. So uh, let's try a number 13 driver. And that is standing quite tall, so let's move down one more to a number 12. That's a little bit taller, but it's okay for them to be a little bit taller. Right, uh, now we know that uh, chamber 4 was also a uh, number two cut, so we'll go and use the same driver as we used in uh, chamber six. And you can see they're sitting at about the same height, which is good. Um, so I think this was a number eight. You know what, I got this wrong, so this was a number six, so... Uh, yeah, let's try number 12 in here. Okay. Uh, let's go for a number 11 in here. Good. Um, I think this was a number four, so try that, okay, that's fine, and we know that this was a number ten, which is the longest pin they have, and I have no idea where that just went, so I'll have to sort it out later, but we've got more in that pile, so that's all good. So there we go. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take each of these pins one by one and we are going to insert them into the chambers in the body. So, pick up the body again, I'm going to take the plug follower and we're going to insert it to just behind that last chamber. And we're now going to take the driver pin that goes in there and we're going to drop him in so that he sits uh, right near where he belongs. Let's get my flashlight out real quick. See if I need some more light in there. So there you can see he's sitting right on the edge of the chamber. I'm just going to try to push him in a little bit. There we go. Now he's sitting on top of the spring, and we're going to take 
our tweezers and push him down so that the plug follower can slide over him and hold him in place. There we go. And we're going to just do the same thing for the remaining driver pins. Like that. Driver pins are usually flat on both sides, so it doesn't really matter which way up they are. Key pins uh, usually are flat on one end and rounded or pointed on the other, so you need to be careful about which way up they face. Quickset is one of the only brands where uh, their key pins are also double-sided. Uh, so there you don't really have to care which way up anything is facing. But uh, Sargent doesn't work that way. So there we go. So we've got all of the drivers and springs in there. We can put our uh, plug holder away. We're going to slide the plug in, pushing the follower out smoothly. And again, we're not pulling on the plug follower. We're letting the plug follower just follow, just slide out with the pressure from the plug. And now we turn it back to the locked position. And we're going to test our key. Key goes in. But it doesn't. Okay, there we go. So it works. It's a little bit tight, which is okay. If you turn it a few times, uh, the pressure will help flatten out any little uh, imperfections in the cuts on the key, and will flatten out the tips of the pins a little bit so that they will mesh together nicely. The important thing is, after you turn it a few times, everything is working smoothly. And it is, so we're going to lock it back up, take the key out, and reattach the cam. This has uh, this is an older uh, model, so it still uses uh, flathead screws, so reattaching them is a little bit of uh, an exercise, but... Don't tighten it all the way with the first one. Wait until you have the uh, second spring as well, because that will help make sure that the cam stays correctly aligned. Um, if you're using a Schlage-style cylinder that has a little screw-on cap, uh, you don't have to worry about that. If you're using a spring clip or a, a C-clip or E-clip style, uh, retainer, uh, which is common on a lot of uh, models. Uh, those, it's obviously just a single piece. There's no tensioning it correctly, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, it's only when you're dealing with the screw type, uh, the two or more screws, uh, that it really matters. But now, we can insert our key, and the lock works just fine a little bit uh, rough, so it probably just needs a little bit of lubrication because it's not hanging up at all. So, that is how you uh, pin a lock. So, until next time, uh, I hope this was helpful, and uh, that just leaves me to say, have fun and happy picking.